Thinking Fadura is an initiative that uh, encompasses uh, many objectives in order to, to take care and to improve social, societal welfare. The initiative that we particularly um, as evaluated in the Inherit project was the, the Thinking Fadura green areas which were restricted to, to some part of the population because only people who, who paid the annual fee could enter and use the green areas. So the initiative wanted to remove that economic barrier in order that everyone could enter and use um, without paying any fee the green areas of Fadura. And this is what we evaluated in the project. We also evaluate uh, the economic costs and economic benefits of implementing this practice. So the key benefits is the, the increase of usage of the green areas from, from, the, the, from the society. So before only a few people could use those green areas which were providing some benefits but most of these benefits were non-value benefits because the green areas were there but people didn't use it. Right now a, a big number of people use every day these, these green areas so recreation is one of the benefits, health, um, health benefits as a result of increasing people's physical activity is an important benefit and also the, the increase in the property values of the surroundings of the green areas. So the key factors for the success was uh, the participatory process from in which the general public, not just only key stakeholders which, who also participate in the process, but the general public had the opportunity to participate in the design of, 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 the, of the green park, that how they wanted to, the green park to be, and the advertisement and increase, uh, in the increase in social, social awareness of the green areas. That was a, a key factor influencing the, the success. And some people thought that the security will be uh, lower and, and people could feel insecure in, in the green areas because right now it's open for everyone. And that was something that many people, the, the reason why many people were against this, this practice, but through different uh, participatory processes, demonstrating that sec security doesn't necessarily have to, to decrease just because removing the fences. So the key benefits founded in the cost-benefit analysis were um, the first one, the increase in property values of the surroundings. Uh, th those houses which were surrounding the, the green areas now could use every day on a daily basis the green areas and of course that, that has a, a key benefit uh, for, for the neighbors who live in the surroundings. Another benefit that was quite important was uh, the increase in physical activity just as a, as a result of having these green areas available to use and to do some sports there. That had a direct benefit on health. In Thinking Fadura, we use house prices as a proxy for that method, and we evaluated it in a radius of 200 meters around the park to capture basically the recreational value of the park, the environmental benefits and the amenity value. Uh, the fact that people are willing to pay just because the area is more beautiful, independently of a concrete use of the area. Uh, 
the travel cost method um, is another methodology that we can use to evaluate those non-market benefits. And uh, it is based on the assumption that the cost and time that people incur in visiting a, a site basically can provide a value of the site itself. So we construct a demand function uh, which basically put in relation the annual number of trips with the cost of each trip. And we are able with this methodology to value the current access to a recreational site or uh, an access to a new recreational site or even changes in the environmental quality. The important thing is that travel cost method is only measuring use value or option value. Uh, the use value is the fact that the consumer, the citizen, is able to make use of the park, which is going there, doing a physical activity or just to, to walk around. Uh, option values refer in, instead to the possibility and the opportunity to use that park in the future. Uh, so I might be willing to use it, uh, though I'm not using it now, I can use it in the future. Uh, while the more intangible values just of existence cannot take it into account in that methodology. And the existence value is the value that a person can attach to the park just because it exists. The fact that it is good that, um, for biodiversity or for its existence in, in general, and uh, this cannot be captured um, with these methods because it requires uh, to ask the willingness to pay of people um, through stated preference methods uh, to understand how much they perceive uh, the value as a value of that park. Well, so how can we interpret the results that we are getting from the cost-benefit analysis? We have different metrics that we can use and they are all complementary. Uh, one is the net present value. Um, as we already said, we need to compare annual flows of cost and benefits in equal terms, which means that we have to discount uh, those cost and benefits. So the net present value is basically the difference between the total discounted benefit and the total discounted cost. So if the project is desirable, the net uh, present value will be uh, equal to zero, meaning the benefits are exactly equal to the cost, or positive, meaning that the benefits are outweighing the cost. Um, if this is not happening and the costs are higher than the benefits, then we are not going to uh, implement or is not socially desirable to implement that intervention. Basically, this measure gives the um, how much is the economic value that is created by that intervention. Uh, we have an idea of that magnitude. That's important because it's not the same an intervention that uh, creates uh, 5,000 euro uh, compared with an intervention that can create uh, 5 million euro, of course. Yeah, that's an, an, an important issue because before only people who were able to afford the annual fee could use these green areas. After the implementation of Thinking Fadura, everyone can use it, so everyone will get those benefits. So that's how Thinking Fadura directly tackles the social equity issue. Well, on the environment is something that uh, also has a positive impact, particularly because some restoration projects has been, have been done, uh, some trees have been planted along the, the small river, and we could argue that the, the environmental quality of, of the green areas have been improved. So the results of Thinking Fadura can be extrapolated to many different places or green areas which 
currently uh, their use is restricted to the general public or to some part of the population. We have seen different sporting clubs like Fadura in different cities in Spain and of course there are different, uh, there are similar cases in Europe. So the cost-benefit analysis um, implemented in Fadura could be used to, to transfer the benefits to other places because it's, it's, there's, there are still many green areas with which, which in which their use has been limited.